Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles and we have a bit of a quickie for you today for no better reason than, well as I'm recording this in precisely four and a half hours Call of Duty World War 2 is going to be unlocked on Steam in the UK and from midnight I'm going to be streaming it so I need to get this video done and get ready for a midnight late night live stream. This is Morpheus Tank Mark 2 and he, as you can quite clearly see, is in the American Tier 9 light tank, the T-49, armed with the always hilarious 152mm derp gun. There are actually a lot of light tanks in this game. There are three on Morpheus's team and four on the enemy team. I guess all of the light tank rebalancing and reshuffling and reintroducing they've been doing has had the desired effect. More people do seem to be playing light tanks these days. Although you could argue that some of the light tanks that they've introduced are basically medium tanks, except smaller and faster. But that's an entirely different matter. For now, T-49, Tier 9 American light tank on Tundra. Is Morpheus tank going to rush the top of the hill? No, he's going to sit here with a derp gun loaded and aimed at the gap and wait to ruin the day of enemy light tanks, like that AMX 1375, who try to rush the hill. The AMX 1375, I think... Well, what you're about to see him do looks pretty stupid because there are a lot of tanks here and he just drives out in front of all of them. But I think what we're actually witnessing there was a sort of enemy tank assisted rage quit <laughs> rather than an act of blatant stupidity on behalf of the 1375. Although it's possible I am being entirely too generous and that may have actually been exactly as stupid as it looked. If that was an act of gross stupidity, well, there's a lot of it about. Here comes a T-71 trying the exact same thing. Hold my beer, I got this. I actually, no, I don't think you do, but thanks for the beer all the same. And yet, despite the fact that Morpheus' entire team is over here and two of the enemy tanks that tried to take the hill had their request denied, the enemy team have still taken the hill. Take a look at the map, in particular, this artillery. Unless that guy has some kind of Romulan cloaking device that he's choosing not to share with the rest of the team, how long exactly do you think he's going to stay alive over there? Oh, but Jingles, none of the enemy team have gone that way either. How do you know? There's nobody over there to spot them. Well, that was kind of disappointing. Derped a shot into a CDC and only did 559 damage. Then again, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? Because I think what happened there is the shot actually went into the tracks and that was 559 splash damage. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. And it does seem a little churlish to complain when you consider that the CDC hit Morpheus with high explosive and didn't even do 200 damage. So, <laughs> Light tank OP, please nerf. Anyway, I think Morpheus is starting to get a little bit worried about this side of the map. Oh, there we go. An IS-3 has just been spotted. And there's only a T-25-2 with a bat chat paying any attention to this side of the map. That SU-14, not. <laughs> He's still sitting where he was two minutes ago, despite the fact that an IS-3 is advancing on his position. Artillery players completely oblivious to everything going on around them. The SU-14 is almost certainly doomed, but God, let's be realistic here. Sitting out there on the flank alone all this time, he's probably not going to be much use to the team alive anyway. Especially not since a Doom Turtle just appeared in front of him. I think, yeah, yeah I was going to say his life expectancy is now measured in seconds, but he's already dead. The Doom Turtle got him. Meanwhile, Morpheus taking fire from multiple directions, and there's a comet on the hilltop just waiting for him to poke his nose out. But Morpheus has a 152mm howitzer. And, yeah, that seems quite legit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's a comet in the front with a 152mm HE shell, sets the engine at the rear on fire. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Anyway, Morpheus has been doing a fair old amount of travelling in this game. He's gone from one end of the map to the other twice, and now he's going to go for it a third time because the Doom Turtle has just appeared. You're about to see a fantastic piece of teamwork here, and some more outrageous good luck. The T-25-2 and the Batchat are working together with the FV-207 artillery to try to take that Doom Turtle out. And here comes Morpheus' tank. Now that T-25-2 only has 850 health, undamaged. The T-95 can one-shot kill him. The Batchat has managed to get around behind the T-95, but he took a hit doing it. He's on very low health. 
and is just about to run out of ammunition. Meanwhile, the T-95 was about to delete the T-25 too when he saw Morpheus tank instead. There's Morpheus tank's outrageous good luck. Took a hit from the T-95 and his tracks ate it. And now it's the T-25 too who's consistently firing shots into the tracks of the T-95 and keeping him pinned in location that allows Morpheus tank to finish him off so the bat chat can get out of there and the T-25 too stays alive. That was some really good work from the T-25 too there. There was absolutely nothing he could do to a T-95 from the front or even the side other than keep his tracks blown off. Tier 7, let's face it, not very good tank destroyer in a Tier 9 game. And yet he still managed to be valuable to the team. Well done to the T-25 2 player. And it's nice to see Morpheus thanking him in chat, recognising his contribution. Way back when, the T-25 2 would have got nothing for doing that. Well, the tanks had been out years before they introduced spotting and tracking damage. So now the T-25 2 gets 50% of the credits and experience earned by the people that did the damage to the tank while he was keeping it immobilised. So even if you're bottom tier, like the T-25-2 was, you can still earn a living in a bottom tier game. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Steady on there, Tiger. Right, which way's the ISU pointing? Oh, he's attacking the Black Prince, so this is going to be easy. And Morpheus doesn't just dirt the shot into the side armour. He waits, gets around the rear where he's guaranteed to pen and do full damage, and makes sure of the kill. And gets out of there before enemy artillery can deliver a care package. The IKV... Worried about the Black Prince. Probably should be worried about Morpheus, but well, let's face it, he's screwed no matter what he does. Artillery letting Morpheus know he's about to take the shot, but it's okay, I got this. <laughs> That's another 800 damage. Enemy artillery pummeling that poor old Black Prince. And now the only actual tank left on the enemy team is the AMX 1375. Yes, I know, I misidentified the AMX 1390. It was the first tank to die as an AMX 1375 at the beginning of the game. Don't look surprised, getting tanks wrong is what I do. <laughs> you must be new here. Anyway, three artillery left, so there's a potential Dimitri's medal up for grabs. The Bat Chat's definitely going for it. Well, then again. Okay, he's fired two shots, but there's still a GW Panther and a Lorraine 155 left. Can you kill those with three shots for a Bat Chat 25? Or is it more likely that the Bat Chat's going to end up with a Pascucci's medal for two artillery kills and Morpheus Tank is going to get his Top Gun? Got to find them first, of course. Oh, there's the G... There's... No, oh, they've both missed. Oh, well, that's great news for the Bat Chat. <laughs> and there's the Top Gun. And the Bat Chat has one shot left. And there's the Pascucci's medal. Very, very nicely done indeed. Morpheus Tank showing off with a little handbrake turn at the end there. Morpheus Tank Mark II, Ace Tanker, High Caliber, and Top Gun. Nine shots fired, one miss, eight hits, eight penetrations, 5,000 damage. The Tundra map is barely a kilometre across, but he managed to cover nearly five kilometres of distance in that game. Special mention, by the way, to that T-25 too. He only actually did 228 damage in that entire game. The poor little bugger always seemed to end up being in the wrong place, but at the right time, constantly having to shoot at the front of T-95s and IS-3s, and yet, despite being in the wrong place at the right time, he was doing the right thing. He was keeping them tracked so his more agile and better armed teammates could finish them off. And despite the fact that he only did 228 damage, which is less than a fifth of the damage done by the FV-4004 Conway, for example, he earned more base experience. So well done to the T-25 too. But this one was all about Morpheus Tank, just having an absolute riot on the Tundra map in his T-49 American Tier 9 light tank. He had a bit of luck on his side in this game as well. I mean, that point-blank range shot in the side from the T-95 that his tracks chewed up. I mean, seriously. <laughs> he should have taken 800 damage there easily. But let's face it, there are tens of thousands of World of Tanks videos up on YouTube, but the ones that you tend to remember, over and above the ones where the guy in question plays well, and Morpheus Tank did play well, I mean, the way that he executed the ISU-152 proved that he's a calm, cool and collected player, not prone to bouts of panic, <laughs> like I am. Um, but it's when you get those, oh my god, you cannot be serious moments, those are the kind of things that tend to make the video stay in your memory. And there were a couple of those in this one. So, Morpheus Tank Mark II, thank you very much for sending this replay in. 
Special congratulations, of course, go to the T25-2 player who made the best of a bad situation and came out of this match doing all right. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.